In this section, you're going to look at Flash CS4 ActionScript 3 event. Now, Flash is an event-driven language, and basically an event has two parts. It has an event listener, and it has an event handler. The event listener connects your object to an event, and the handler is the function that runs when that event occurs. So basically, you're going to attach, in this section, an event listener to a button. So let's take a look at the graphic real quick. And actually, let's just run the, the program. So you're going to create a button, and you're going to roll over and click on it, and when you do, something's going to happen. And the way you do that is you have to attach an instance name to the button. So actually, in Flash, there's two types of uh, objects that you can control with instance names. One is a button, and the other is a movie clip. And the way you're going to do that is create the graphic, turn it into a, a button in this instance, and use dot syntax to add to it an event listener. So let's go ahead and take a look at the graphic in a little more detail, I'll show you how to add that... Uh, instance name, then come back and let's do some coding. So we're looking at the flash stage and here's the button I created and I'm going to click on it to activate it and then I want to add an instance name to it. The way I do that is I go to window and I choose properties. And there's my properties panel right there and at the top of that property panels is where I put the instance name. So just type in an instance name, whatever you want it to be, I'm going to call mine my button, BTN. And once that's in there you're ready to go back to coding. So let's take a look at actions again. So now that we have the instance name, we want to use dot syntax to add a listener to it. So I just basically type the instance name. I put a dot there and then I add the event listener. This is probably one of the most important commands you can learn in all of Flash right now since it is an event driven language. So you're going to be using this add event listener over and over again. Let's talk about the syntax just a little bit. It actually has two parts. It has a basically the listener part and the method that's going to be fired or function is going to be fired when the uh, event occurs. So let's take a look at that real quick. So if you look at this example, it's a mouse event because anything that's clicking with the mouse is contained in the mouse event. So that's a method, and in that method there's properties. Now I'm going to take away this period here and add it again so I can get the code hinting up here. And basically the properties that can occur within the mouse event are all in cap letters. So you can see you, hang out, you can have a click, you can have a double click, you can have a mouse down, mouse move, mouse out, mouse over, mouse up, mouse wheel, and finally a roll out and roll over. All those properties can occur uh, with your mouse. That's really good to know. And when that happens, for example, the mouse click, then this method button clicked or function button clicked is fired. Now, I made that function up just as we did last time. And let's scroll down a little bit so we can take a look at it. So here's the function right here, and it's called button clicked. And of course, the function must receive an event data, and all those event data items are void in their return. And so we have event, and it's a mouse event, so it must match the listener, of course. And let's go ahead and put something in here like trace I was clicked. So we'll run this uh, function real quick, or listener. So when you run the program, the add listener is activated. And it's waiting for me to click on this button, and when I do, uh, I have a return, and it was I was clicked. Oh, that's cool. So let's go to the next part. Uh, let's do something else. Let's access uh, some of the information about the button using the event. So if I go event.type, that's going to tell me the type of action that occurred. So let's control test that. And so when I click on that button, I return, oh, it was a click event. Oh, that's pretty cool. Now here's something that's really, really useful. So let's go back real quick. Once again, using that event, Basically, this event gives you a reference to the button that accesses its property. So I'm going to event dot target dot name. This is really important because this is going to return the instance name of the button that you clicked on. So let's run that and click it. And I, I can keep clicking it, and it'll keep returning everything. And you can see it's saying my instance name is my button. Now you might think, hey, I, I knew what the instance name was already. What good is that? But sometimes you're going to have hundreds of objects on the stage, and you can create a conditional statement that when you click on it, if that particular button was clicked on, something happens. So it's very powerful to use that technique. So remember, once again, keep this in mind. You'll be using it event.target.name. I use it in the book as well. Okay, so that's pretty cool, and that's pretty much all there is to events in Flash. Basically, you have a button, instance name, and you're going to use dot syntax to attach this method, this add listener method to it. And you have a click method, and then you have the uh, function that's run. Now, there's something interesting here. You're going to ask yourself, well, you know, typically when you create a function, let's do this real quick. Don't you have a parenthesis in there? 
And the answer is yes, and you can see the parenthesis is down here. But this is a special uh, nomenclature. But whenever it's put in an event listener, you drop the parenthesis. Okay? So just remember that. You're going to make that mistake every once in a while. You're going to try to put your parenthesis in your event listener and it's not going to work. Just make sure that what's doing is you don't have to have that because it knows it's going to be basically looking for a function. So you can just drop that parenthesis. That's just the way the uh, syntax of the language is. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Now I want to go back into Flash and show you how to create that button because this is very interesting. So let's go back. So I created a beveled button here in Flash, and Flash has some very powerful drawing tools. So I'm on the Flash stage right now, and I want to create a rectangle. Let's come along here and select uh, this little uh, rectangle drawer and draw ourselves a little rounded rectangle. And of course, you get that round from the Properties panel, of course. And now that I have that, I'm going to select that and create, turn it into a button. So I come along here, and I can come Modify and turn it into a button. And that's cool. Let's call it Button 2. And I'm going to double click on that so when I roll over, I'm going to go to that timeline now. They bring my timeline up here. I basically, I want to have all the different states. So hit F6 like we learned uh, at the beginning of the lesson. So hit F6 a few times. And now I can access my overstate and change its color so when I roll over it, something happens. So let's go to color picker up here. And we'll make it orange. There we go. And so we can see that exists only in that particular rollover state. But you know, that's not all there is to making a button. I'd actually like to make it kind of beveled. So we'll go back to Scene. And I'm going to add a bevel here. Now how do I do that? I'm going to go to Windows and choose Properties. And at the bottom of this Properties panel, let's click on the button to activate it. And at the bottom of this panel, there's a Filters folder. And I'm going to click on that. And I have all these things that I can select. Isn't that pretty cool? Let me bring this up so you can see it. All right, and let's click on that filter folder again. And I'm going to come down here and choose bevel. Now we can't quite see it, so I'm going to bring the view down just a little bit so you can actually see everything. This is really important, so let's come down here and there's my bevel. I'm going to choose that and now I can add a bevel to my button. There it is, a nice little bevel. Let's get rid of that. Now I'd like to put some words across here, so I'm going to double click once again and go back into that frame level. Let's go back to our timeline. And I want to add, you clicked me here, so basically what I want to do is add another layer to this uh, button timeline. So click on this uh, new layer button, and all you have to do is type in some text now, and that will go right there on your button. So you're going to bring your button right here, bring it up. I'm going to hit my text tool, and I type, click me. And you can choose whatever color you want. We'll just choose uh, orange for now, that's fine and uh, we'll just center that and now that is on every single button and when you go back to the scene we now have a bevel with a label and when you run it nothing happens because it doesn't have a listener on it and it doesn't have basically an instance name so let's go ahead and add that instance name to it real quick by going to Windows Properties and I'm going to go ahead and bring this up so you can see everything that I'm doing I don't want you to miss any of this so we'll go to Windows and we'll hit Properties again there we go and it says instance name. We'll give her an instance name. We'll go, okay. My button 2. And so now you've done it all. You're ready to now use this in action scripting. So I've hit my action panels again. So go back to my actions panel again. And if I wanted to use this button, for example, I'd have to use my button 2. And then add my listener to it, of course. And then whatever mouse event that I want to occur. Let's choose a rollover. There it is. And let's just choose the same method. So now when I roll over this second button, it should basically execute the function. Let's see if that happens. Keep your fingers crossed. And let's roll over. Oop, and guess what? I just rolled over it and it executed my function. And it's that easy to create very stylistic buttons and turn them into uh, uh, event listeners and event handlers. So hope you got something out of this. What we're going to do next time is take everything we've taught you here and create an animation engine.